Welcome back to Switch Stars, my name's Luke, and roguelikes and roguelites have long been two of my favourite genres of game, with each unique run offering its own trials and tribulations, and the games themselves providing near endless amounts of replayability. Thankfully, the Nintendo Switch is an absolute treasure trove, and many of the best titles in the genre have received a port to the platform. But as usual, rather than just reeling off a list of the obvious candidates, today I'm going to be sharing a selection of 10 of the lesser known and more unique ones, followed by a quickfire showcase of over 90 more, which I'll list in order in the pinned comment down below. With that said though, let us now pray to the gods of RNG as we delve into 10 unusual roguelike games on the Nintendo Switch. So our first game actually comes from a very well known series, that being Shovel Knight. But unlike the original title, Shovel Knight Dig is a roguelite which has you delving down into unknown depths as you attempt to recover your stolen loot from the clutches of Drill Knight and his dastardly minions. If you're familiar with the control scheme of the original though, you'll feel right at home with this one. You have your usual Shovel Knight moveset including your downwards dig which you'll get plenty of use out of, and a plethora of active and passive items, some returning, some entirely new. But each run sees you working through procedurally generated biomes with unique enemies, hazards and environments, each home to a powerful boss knight, and you'll be gathering riches to unlock new armour sets and items which then appear in future runs. It's a new and unique spin on the original formula and one which I've recently had a lot of fun playing and dying in repeatedly, often to a murderous drill which persistently pursues you. Next up on our list is Skull, the Hero Slayer, a classic action platformer roguelike which sees skeletal protagonist Skull on a quest to rid the world of demons. What makes this one so unique is its skull swapping mechanics, which much like the Genesis classic Kid Chameleon allows you to switch your own head for those of your defeated enemies, in the process gaining new abilities and movesets, and there are in fact a hundred different characters for you to embody. If you're looking for a bit of a challenge though, the bosses in this one will really give you a run for your money, but there's plenty in the way of progression and variety, and if you want to see a little bit more of the gameplay, I actually played this one in a live stream not so long ago, so be sure to go and check it out. Now, Roundguard is probably one of the most unique concepts for a roguelike that I've ever seen, combining the casual pachinko-like gameplay of Peggle with classic dungeon crawling and RPG archetypes, including the rogue, wizard, warrior and druid, each of them with their own unique arsenal of spells and abilities. Unlike Peggle, the objective isn't to clear all of the pegs though, but rather defeat all of the enemies before proceeding onward through procedurally generated dungeons, completing quests as you go and defeating a cast of oddball bosses. As with other roguelikes though, you'll also amass a collection of trinkets and weapons along the way to prepare you for the final battle, and the game also has leaderboards and daily and weekly challenges to compete in, so plenty of content to be getting on within this one. So, Tumble Seed is a game that I recently featured in my list of most challenging co-op games, but it's also one of the most original roguelikes on the platform. Simple to pick up, but hard to master, the game tasks you with transporting a seed to the top of a mountain using a platform as a would-be elevator, with each Joy-Con controlling the height of either side of it, and the game can be played in two-player co-op mode. It's definitely one of those games though which looks way easier than it actually is, and along the way you'll be dodging pitfalls and enemies by carefully rolling your seed back and forth to navigate around them, but you'll also have the power of nature to give you a helping hand in the form of 30 unique seed powers, from life sapping auras to whole flooding flood fruits and spiky thorn vines. A really interesting one this though, and well worth picking up if you're looking for something a little different. So the first of two newer titles on our list then, we have Papercut Mansion, a top-down roguelike which combines elements of puzzle solving, survival horror and twin stick shooting, as you work your way around an ever-changing Resident Evil style mansion attempting to solve its mysteries. 
As you travel from room to room though, you'll be hopping between different dimensions dealing with the perils that they behold. You'll meet a whole host of unusual characters, complete quests for them and collect cash and experience to upgrade your character and purchase trinkets to help you on your journey. But you're always up against the clock in this one, as a five-armed demigod watches on, waiting for you to freeze or bleed to death or for your mind to crack. But look on the bright side, you'll at least have some wonderful papercraft visual aesthetics and Burton-esque vibes to enjoy whilst it happens. Immortal Redneck is up next and there are several different FPS roguelikes to choose from on the Switch, but I thought I'd go with this one as I feel our southern US brethren don't quite get enough love in this world. As an innocent redneck tourist though, you awaken mummified and stranded in ancient Egypt, confused at how you wound up there and surrounded by armies of mythological creatures, and so the only thing left for it is to grab yourself a gun and start shooting. Working your way from pyramid to pyramid, you'll be gathering mystical scrolls of power, wield a vast array of weapons, some contemporary, some not so contemporary, and you'll even get to wield the power of gods as one of nine different character classes. Gameplay is fast and frenetic though, just like the good old boomer shooters of the 90s, so if you're looking for a decent roguelike shooter, then this one should definitely fit the bill. Now our next game is without a doubt one of my favourite shoot 'em ups on the platform, and it also happens to be a roguelike with some ridiculously over the top gameplay elements, in your face visuals and a kicking chiptune soundtrack for you to play along to. There's really too much to cover off in detail here, so be sure to check out my review on it, but essentially each run is an assault on the senses, and while its core is rooted in the shmup genre, Levels are randomly generated and you'll be utilising your dash ability to dodge left and right between enemies and asteroid belts, dealing with mad events and battling ludicrous bosses. It's fast paced and frantic and subsequent runs unlock even more mechanics for you to deal with and there are definitely plenty of nods to pop culture and other classic video games thrown in for good measure. But all round it's one of those weird and wonderful titles which you definitely won't forget in a hurry. From the old to the new then and from a shoot em up to a dodge em up, Swordship is another new title which aims to flip the script on its head, giving you no weapons and a boatload of enemies to deal with as you skim your way down river and use their own firepower against them. While not your conventional roguelike, putting an emphasis on high score chasing, it does feature some randomly generated enemy layouts, a whole host of new ships to unlock and a risk reward system which offers a choice of power ups or additional lives after each level. The emphasis here though is on fast reactions, skillful movement and tactical positioning, but if you want a more in-depth look at this one, then be sure to check out Alex's review over at Switch Corner, which I've gone ahead and linked down in the description box below. Our penultimate game today then is Atomicrops, a post-apocalyptic mashup of farming sim and twin stick shooting which has you planting and cultivating crops whilst simultaneously trying to defend them from mutating nasty things. The daily gameplay cycle has you harvesting these crops to feed the townfolk and earn cash for items and perks, and there's actually a hell of a lot of depth to this one including seasonal rotations, boss battles, new characters, weapons and abilities, and a variety of different biomes for you to explore. You can also befriend the local fauna or get yourself hitched for some additional assistance, and there's plenty of accumulated progression to keep things interesting. But overall, an interesting mashup of genres this one, and definitely worth a look at. So our final game today then is one which, to be honest, I would completely overlook if I saw it on the eShop, but little Noah, Scion of Paradise actually has a lot to offer with some very interesting combat mechanics and some fast-paced action platforming similar to that found in Dead Cells. 
Exploring ancient ruins on the search for materials to repair her airship though, Noah is actually unable to attack directly and instead invokes the power of Lilliputs, recruitable spirit creatures which can be swapped in and out to form a lineup, and each of these comes with its own unique attacks and abilities. There are over 40 of the little sprites in the game for you to collect, and in addition to these you can unlock new costumes for Noah which grant her powerful special abilities, and the mana that you gain in runs can be used to upgrade and repair the facilities on your airship, improving your stats and making each subsequent run a little less difficult. Some really unique concepts in this one though, and one which I myself will definitely be diving into. And so there you have it, 10 uniquely different roguelikes which you may or may not yet have heard of, but I've hopefully been able to highlight for you. If you're a fan of the genre though, be sure to stay tuned for a rapid fire roundup of another 90 or so available right now on the Switch, and you'll notice that there are no card based games featured, as I'll actually be covering off those in a dedicated deck builder video at some point in the near future. For now though, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this one, be sure to check out my other top lists which include family friendly co-op games, top beat em ups and switch party games, and subscribe for more top lists, reviews and other switch related content. As always though, thanks once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.